twins over time is something called epigenetic drift. And this is the environmental influence on the disease. So one twin might, both twins may have scoliosis, one becomes progressive, one doesn't. That's called epigenetic drift. And this is a very, very important concept for us. So what leads to that epigenetic drift? Dietary changes, lifestyle choices, pollutants, toxicities, uh, individuality related to our interaction with our environment. So this, I think it's, it's fascinating stuff. So what takes a one patient from eight years old to 14 years old in this direction versus a patient that goes from eight years old to 10 years old with no progression, okay? Why does this happen versus this? That's the epigenetic drift. This is an actual patient of mine. Uh, she was scheduled for surgery and she had a 54 degree scoliosis. The parents, like most parents, wanted to avoid surgery. They found us, they came to us. We started treating her. The middle panel is a year into treatment. And you can see that the curvature is improving. And then a year and a half after the uh, initial treatment started. How old was this patient? Uh, I think she was like in 14 range, something like that. Um, I think she was beyond riser two. I could pick up the riser sign on this one here. She was about a riser two here, riser one in the middle, maybe a riser zero when she started. Uh, so how can this happen? How can we improve a scoliosis from 54 degrees to 26 degrees? And if it can happen once, can it happen again? Right? And so if this is happening in my clinic, should we be doing surgery on every curvature just because it's 54 degrees? No, we should absolutely not. But that is the current orthopedic management is to, hey, it's 50 degrees, surgery. Doesn't matter. Any other uh, factor is, is not calculated into the decision, and that needs to change. And it can change if we continue this conversation and we bring these conversations uh, not only to the public, to the, but to other healthcare professionals.